Hello everyone, I apologize for not uploading in a while. Between work and doing everything I can to prepare my roster for tier 4, I just haven't found time to work on a raid guide for the last few raids that'll come out. But now that I'm all caught up, here you go. Today's video will showcase Stay in Mind. Hope you enjoy. Stay in Mind will introduce a new progression system called Transcendence. It is a massive power boost to your character and will be unlocked over time. I do not plan on making a guide for Transcendence, but I will leave a link below to guides I think are useful for Transcendence. As of recently, completing Gate 3 Thea Mine on normal mode will unlock all Transcendence levels for your armor. Before we enter Gate 1 Thea Mine, you want to bring these battle items. Dark Grenade, Atropine for DPS, Stimulant for support, and Destruction Bomb. Gate 1 has a few gimmicks and a few major mechanics. Let's go over the raid gimmicks first. Throughout the encounter, the boss would draw small organisms on the ground around her. Doing enough damage to the organisms will turn them into red orbs you can pick up. This will give you an organism buff that does not expire and stacks up to 10 times. This organism buff will be required towards the end of the fight. Everyone in the party needs to have at least one stack of this buff before the last phase. It is ideal for all DPS to get as many stacks as they can. Do not waste your skills on damaging the organisms, as they will turn into red orbs over time via cleave damage through AoE skills. Another gimmick throughout the encounter is her adrenaline buff. When she does normal red telegraph attacks, she gets an adrenaline buff below her HP bar. In addition, these attacks will be targeted at a specific player that has a 2 eye icon above their head. This is similar to Ivory Gate 2. After 3 stacks of adrenaline, she will follow up with a counter attack. If you fail the counter, Every attack afterwards will be a counter, up to 2 or 3 times. Succeeding a counter will generate Sidereal Meter. Sidereal Meter fills up fast throughout this encounter, to the point where you can use Sidereal 4 or more times. If your HP gets really low throughout the encounter, a ghost will spawn that will attempt to follow you, and you will see an icon above your head that slowly fills up. If it fills up entirely, you will be mind controlled. Stay away from the ghost for about 10 seconds if this happens, to prevent being mind controlled. The first major mechanic happens at 144 HP lines or below. The boss will move to the center and a dialogue box will be shown. Party 1 will go to their times 3 and Party 2 will go to their times 3 plus 1 position. Your camera will zoom out and you will see a lot of blue line telegraphs in all directions. Hug the edge of the map so that you do not get hit. If you do get hit, you will be stunned for a few seconds. After the blue lines go away, throw your destruction bomb on the tentacles that spawn at your position. Once the tentacles are destroyed, yellow telegraphs will appear that you should avoid. If you get hit by the yellow telegraph, the boss will grab you for the duration of this mechanic. If everyone in the party does this properly, most or all tentacles on the map will be removed. After the yellow telegraphs go away, go to the middle and complete the stagger check on the boss. She will take increased stagger for every tentacle that is removed. Once you complete the mechanic, she will spawn a ton of blue circle telegraphs on the ground that will stun you. If you get hit, do not worry, it does not do a lot of damage. Around 8 minutes into the fight, the boss will trigger a special pattern. The tell for this pattern is when her head gets larger. She will aggro to a random player and attempt to charge at them, then backstep and fire tentacles in her front. The charge and the tentacles will grab you if you get hit. If no one gets grabbed, the pattern will end. If someone does get grabbed, she will keep repeating the same attack until she misses and grabs no one. Then she will aggro to a random player and backstep for a counter. If you miss the counter, it is fatal damage on normal mode and a wipe on hard mode. Up until the 100 bar mechanic, you will notice that there are 3 craters on the map. Every time the boss is countered or staggered, a random player will get a spike symbol under their feet. This player needs to go to one of the craters so that the boss can attack that crater. If done properly, the crater will show red lines around it. This needs to be done two times in total at the same exact crater. You should save Sidereal at this point. This is because if two players fail to go to the same crater, or if the boss does not get countered or staggered twice, Balthor will save you. At 100 HP lines or below, the second mechanic will occur. The craters around the map will explode. Stay away from them to avoid death. If you cannot get two players to go to the same crater, it will be obvious because the explosion radius will not be that large. When a crater is hit twice by the boss, the radius is very large, causing a boss to be knocked up in the air. In the event that you fail to do this, when the boss dialogue finishes, you can use Balthor to launch the boss in the air and force a mechanic to occur. When the boss is in the air, after a moment, two tentacles will spawn on the ground noted by a health bar. Four players, grouping up in pairs of two, 
we need to decide on what tentacle to go to first. Both players will throw destruction bomb on a tentacle, then a yellow telegraph will be shown. This will force a boss to grab you, which is what you want to do in order to succeed the mechanic. During all of this, blue circle telegraphs and a blue pizza will spawn periodically. Do not get hit, otherwise someone will have to free you, which may cause you to die due to not getting grabbed in time. Focus on dodging the blue telegraphs first before attempting to get grabbed. After the first four players are grabbed, the boss will spawn another three tentacles if you are on normal mode. In hard mode, only two more will spawn. Once everyone gets grabbed, the mechanic will finish. The next mechanic occurs at 55 HP lines or below. It is the exact same as the 144 mechanic I discussed above. Go to your X3 and X3 plus 1 positions and throw destruction bomb on the tentacles, then stagger the boss. Try not to get hit by the blue or yellow telegraphs. In hard mode, the 55 HP line mechanic is a little different. You will still throw destruction bomb on the tentacles, but do not throw it anywhere near the raspberry orbs. The ones with spikes on them you can destroy, but the raspberry shaped ones you cannot destroy. Only two will spawn and they will be opposite direction of each other. Once you complete this mechanic, you'll be brought to the last phase of the fight. During the last phase, you will see eyes lingering around the map. Walking over them will trigger an attack. If you get hit, your HP will be brought to 1% with ghost spawning that will follow you. Remember that when ghosts spawn due to low HP, you will have to stay away from them for about 10 seconds for them to go away and prevent mind control. Support players should prioritize walking over the eyes that are near the boss so that no one in a raid accidentally steps on them and gets hit by the eye. Around 35 HP lines, the next mechanic will occur. All the eyes on the map will stop moving and look in a specific direction. This indicates where a safe spot is located. Most parties tend to skip this mechanic by using Balthor to activate Endorphin. Use Balthor around 37 HP lines. Make sure everyone receives the Balthor buff. The boss may try to knock players out of it, so play safe. Endorphin is a DPS check where you have to burn down the shield on the boss in 25 seconds. At this point, you need to use Dark Grenade and Atropines. Remember that everyone needs at least one stack of the organism buff and must receive the Balthor buff to trigger Endorphin. After you remove her shield, there is no more major mechanics. In hard mode, there is one more major mechanic. But as of recently, it can be skipped if you happen to get the boss down to 0 HP lines shortly after Endorphin is finished. For this mechanic, the map will zoom out at first and a black hole will spawn in the middle attempting to suck you in. With red arms at the edge of the map that will sometimes attack you if you get near them. She will attempt to grab members again, just like discussed above during the 8 minute timed pattern. However, this time she is much faster and will do 2 dashes instead of 1. If everyone is grabbed, it is a wipe. Play is safe and pay attention to your mini-map to see where the boss is located. For Theomine Gate 2, you will bring Dark Grenade, Time Stop, and Sacred Charm. You can swap out Time Stop with Atropine if you like, but I do recommend Time Stop while progging this raid. At least one or two members should bring Frost Grenade for the last mechanic. There is one major gimmick for this gate that I will discuss now. When the boss performs Dark Blue attacks, anyone hit by them will get a weakness debuff. This debuff cannot be cleansed and will stack. You take more damage with every stack. If you get stunned with this debuff, a bubble will spawn from your character that will explode and deal damage to you and anyone next to you. Usually after 3 stacks, you can expect to die if you are stunned. For hard mode, the first major mechanic happens at 152 HP lines or below. The boss will move to the middle and destroy half the map. At this point, you can die to gravity. In addition, a dragon will appear a few times and perform attacks that can give you a weakness debuff. The next major mechanic cap is at 134 HP lines or below. This mechanic exists in both normal and hard mode and operate the same way. A short intermission will occur and the boss will destroy the other side of the map leaving only a bridge in the center. Everyone needs to stack up near the middle. A red telegraph will be shown. This showcases where the boss will land. When the camera zooms out, lightning will spawn under everyone's feet, space bar to move out and not get hit. Then everyone needs to stack up somewhat close to the bottom of the bridge except for the player that is number 4 in party 2. Player 4 in party 2 will stand close to the boss. The boss is going to spawn 7 orbs in total. Every orb has to be countered. After the 7th orb is countered, the 8th member has to go near the boss and counter him. The easiest way to coordinate this is by party number. Within party 1, number 1 through 4 will be the first 4 players to counter. Within party 2, number 1 through 4 will be the last 4 members to counter which means number 4 in party 2 is responsible for countering the boss. When you counter your orb, you will get a debuff. 
After a few seconds, you'll be locked in place and unable to use battle items. In addition, you'll have a large black circle around you. Anyone standing in this circle will take heavy tick damage. To make sure everyone is spread out properly, I'm showcasing a picture on screen now where the party members should go after they have countered their orbs. You're basically forming a U-shape so that no black circles overlap with another player. The final counter at the boss can be real or fake. If he glows red, that is considered a fake counter. Wait patiently for him to glow blue, then use your counter skill. Once this occurs, everyone should gather around this position that I'm showcasing on screen. A lightning will spawn under everyone's feet again, spacebar out to this area, as he will then follow up with the yellow telegraph that can knock you off the map if you were hit. A moment after, your camera will zoom back in and the boss will appear in the middle for another counter. Someone will need to counter the boss. Everyone else needs to focus on destroying the debris at the edge of the bridge that is blocking your path. During this phase, Dark Fog could be chasing you, and everyone needs to be moving together so that no one is left behind. One player bringing marching flag for this may help out during progging. Lightning will periodically spawn under your feet. Be sure to dodge and take your time. If you get hit by lightning, ask for a cleanse. After traversing through the two different paths, they will eventually intersect. You need to stop here and wait for the boss to appear for a counter. If he appears on the left side, it may be a fake counter followed up with the real one. Fake counters should never be hit as it can cause a lot of people to die. Wait for an aglow blue, then you will counter. If he appears on the right side, it will always be a real counter. After the first counter, the upcoming section will be bombarded by lightning or dark circles. Take your time with dodging. Again, if you get hit, ask for a cleanse. After you get past a 90 degree path, you'll see some sides of the map that are white. This means that after a moment, they will disappear. A simple misclick can cause you to die by gravity. After you traverse a little bit through this path, you'll see the boss appear again at the top or bottom side for a counter. Mobs will also appear that will hinder you. Aim your counter carefully and clear out the mobs. Moving up a bit further, you'll see another portion of mobs and the boss will either counter at top or suck any players in followed up with a stagger check. If someone does get sucked in, it's not a big deal as long as you finish the stagger check. The next counter will be right before the bridge splits into two paths again. He will either appear at the bottom or top side. If he appears at the top side, it can be a fake counter, so be patient. Once you get past this bridge, all DPS players need to move to the far right side. Supports need to stand on the left side as three elite mobs will spawn. These elites will explode and knock back players and do a lot of damage. Supports need to aggro these mobs and use push immune skills like God's Decree, Starry Knight, etc. to prevent being knocked back. After you deal with all the mobs, knock down a debris that is blocking your path and proceed to walk up together. The boss will appear one more time on the left or right side for a counter. When you get to the top, stand in the safe spot shown on screen as the boss will perform an attack. This spot will prevent any unnecessary damage. After the attack, move in and damage the boss. You'll be fighting him here for quite a bit of time. After a few normal attacks, the boss will stand still and flap his wings. This is your cue to use the Azena Sidereal to trigger special Azena interaction. This will freeze the boss in place for a long time, allowing you to deal out a ton of damage. This special Azena will not occur if you did not get three successful counters on the boss prior to the elite mobs that the supports had to soak. If the special interaction does not occur, the boss will not be frozen and instead showcase a yellow telegraph that can knock players off the map if you do not dodge. With or without the special Azena, after the boss flies away, go to the left side. At this point, you need to walk up the path while avoiding yellow telegraphs. If you are a fast class, you can move ahead of others if you like. When you get to the very end, the boss will appear with a real or fake counter. However, if you get to the end before the boss appears, the boss will simply fly away. When everyone gets to the end, destroy the debris to get to the final stage. Lightning will spawn under two random players twice. Be sure to dodge. Then the boss will appear in the middle, noted by a yellow telegraph. At this point, you will need to damage the boss down to 72 HP lines to trigger the next mechanic. During this phase of the fight, the boss can perform a few special patterns which I will discuss now. The first one is when he stands still and spawns tornadoes around him. The four players farthest from the boss will get a dark circle under their feet. These players need to drop the puddles at the edge of the map and do not stack them too close together. I recommend dropping them at 6 or 12 o'clock. Standing on these blue puddles will slow you and deal a lot of damage. If there are 8 or more of these puddles on the map, it will be a wipe. But there is a way to cleanse them. If party DPS is not super high, the boss will eventually teleport to the middle and someone will have a 2-eye icon above their head. 
This icon means that the boss is targeting you, and after a few moments, he will flap his wings and knock back anyone on his side. But keep the boss steady at 6 or 12 o'clock. Everyone else should be at 12 or 6 o'clock, wherever the puddles are located. White orbs will spawn around the boss, and a player should stand somewhere close to aggro the white orb, then kite the white orb so that it touches the blue puddle. This will cleanse and remove it. If you do not push DPS fast enough to the 72 bar mechanic, he can do a pattern where he smashes the ground three times in total. Black telegraphs will spawn under your feet that will knock you up so be on the move. Afterwards, players will get a blue puddle under their feet again. Then the boss will show a red telegraph. These pools must be spread out and touching the red telegraph as the red telegraph will destroy them. If the boss removes puddles that are stacked, it will do map wide damage and may kill the entire raid. The last special pattern only occurs in hard mode. The camera will zoom out, avoid being in the middle. The boss will quickly show a blue line telegraph. Everyone must stand directly under the boss. This will be the safe spot when he lands to prevent unnecessary damage. Support should use shield and DR skills in case a player is not standing in a proper place. At 72 HP lines or below, the next mechanic will occur. The boss will move to the middle and you will see a blue or white aura around him and a stagger bar. You will also notice blue or white orbs around the map, and one player will be targeted with the icon above their head. If the boss is showing a blue aura, you need to align yourself with the boss and auto-attack white orbs to his direction as this will deal heavy stagger damage. If the boss is showing a white aura, you will attack blue orbs in the boss's direction. You can also hit the wrong colored orbs away from the boss to prevent accidents. While the players are doing this, the person who is targeted by the boss needs to make sure he is not in line of sight of any orbs nearby. This is because the boss is going to fire a beam in the player's direction momentarily, and if that beam does hit an orb, it causes unnecessary AoE damage. In addition, this beam can knock you off the map. When enough orbs hit the boss, the stagger check will be complete. However, if it's close to being complete, and there are no more orbs, you can use some stagger skills to finish the rest. When the mechanic is complete, the boss will be staggered for a long time. Then he will fly up in the air and transform. Do not get hit by the yellow telegraph. Around 50 lines or below, the 8 lightning wall attack may occur. The boss will show a safe spot in the middle with the blue waves slowly moving out. Then showcase multiple lightning walls around the edges of the map with 3 telegraphs spawning under your feet. Towards the end of this attack, most of the lightning walls will vanish with only 2 remaining that yet to hide behind to prevent death. When the blue wave is slowly moving out, you can slowly move out with it to stay on the inside edge or get knocked back and go to the outer edge. You can figure out which lightning wall is real by paying attention to which one has more lightning around it. If you cannot make it in time, utilize your time stop potion to prevent dying. At 18 HP lines or below, the last mechanic will occur. If your sidereal meter is full before this mechanic occurs, it is recommended to use a Zena to deal additional damage. The boss will fly up and disappear. All players should stack up in the middle. There will be three waves of mobs that will spawn. You will need to kill them as fast as you can. All blue puddles will also enlarge at this point in the fight. The first wave of mobs are normal and should not take long to kill. Gather them up and cleave them down. Use dark grenade if you need to. Watch under your feet as well since lightning will spawn and will stun you. The second wave is the most important. It is four elite mobs with more HP and more attacks. You should gather them up and use dark grenade and frost grenade. Frost Grenade will freeze them in place for a long time. Do not hold skills as you need to kill them quickly. Running out of time will result in a wipe. The final wave will be two dragons that spawn opposite of each other. You need to gather in the middle. One dragon will glow blue and charge to the middle. Do not counter this dragon. Once he is charging, move out of the way. The other dragon will fire a yellow telegraph at a random player. Dodge this to avoid death. Once the dragon that glowed blue gets to the middle, go behind him and position yourself to use die rain so that it hits both the dragons at the same time. The dragon at the edge will die, the other dragon in the middle will not have much HP left. Burn him down as quickly as you can. If you kill all mobs and the dragon in time, the boss will reappear in the middle. All you have to do at this point is kill the boss until he reaches zero to complete the gate. And that will conclude my Theomine Gate 1 and Gate 2 guide. I decided to combine both of these gates into one video since I am a bit behind with the raid guides. Theomine Gate 3 will be a separate video. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also stream on Twitch. My Twitch channel is Deathboy523. Would love if y'all could stop by the stream and hang out when I am streaming.
Until then, I will see everyone in the next video. Peace.